Hello students, Michael Sanchez, violin fiddle teacher here. Hope you guys are having a good evening. We're going to be going through the Dennis Murphy's Polka, which is a traditional Irish piece. And we're going to be kind of doing it what's on the page, but maybe adding a few little licks here and there. I'm going to take the second endings through the first time just to play it for you guys, not take it too fast. But yeah, polka is a very traditional um, type of uh, music that you can uh, play in traditional Irish music. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the class. Here we go. Just like that. All right, so that was Dennis Murphy's Polka. So let me go through and uh, give you guys some fiddle tips. So as you guys can see, there's not really many um, slurs in here. So we're going to change that up a bit. Um, did a lot of sliding, up sliding, and down sliding throughout. So I'm going to show you kind of where I did that. Um, anytime I, you have a first finger in a polka, it's pretty much given to do a down slide. It just sounds more... Polkish <laughs> to do that. So downsliding basically means where you're starting on the pitch of the note. So in this case, it would be an F sharp, first finger on the, on the E string, and then sliding your finger back towards the end of the fingerboard. Um, and then when you reach the very end of the fingerboard, that's when you change bow direction. So you're basically trying to get this sound. So instead of playing that like this, It's better to play it like this. So right when you start putting your finger down, don't push it down too hard because you want to be able to kind of slide it back rather quickly and slowly. Um, well, I shouldn't say slowly because it's a 16th note, but um, gradually to where it's the same speed coming back. You don't want to go, you want to go gradually. Like that. Okay, and then we have an upslide potential for the D. Uh, we have a dotted eighth note, sixteenth. So for you guys that read uh, classical music, you know kind of how that works. Basically, if it's confusing um, regarding counting this particular measure, what I would suggest is splitting this into two parts. So the first part is basically the first part of the measure, two out of four. This is part one out of four. That's kind of how I look at it. And then this next part is part two out of four. So now if you're tapping your foot to basically the quarter note, so if the quarter note is quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, then it's going to be ba 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 bum bum bum. And right when I get to that third tap or third uh, snap, that's when I'm reaching the A. Technically, if you want to think um, in math terms, which some of you guys might like math, it's uh, three quarters of a beat or 0.75 beats for the dotted eighth. And then um, the remaining of the beat is satisfied by the 16th, which is a quarter or 0.25 of the beat. So two eighth notes are the same amount of time, one beat as a dotted quarter, uh, eighth and 16th note. How many of you guys understand how that rhythm works, if that makes sense? You guys kind of get that. You do see that a lot in, in polkas. All right. Cool. Um, one thing that I didn't add earlier, um, because I was trying to make it as simple as possible, is the assumption of the swing when it comes to playing polkas. So what I mean by that is that when you play in, if you play anything that says polka, what you should actually do is instead of playing eighth notes straight, which is the way that all of us know how to play them, two eighth notes. 
we're actually going to do eighth notes more similar to this. Technically, it wouldn't be exactly that. It would be a swing, which would be basically three. If, if the um, <clears throat> It'd be basically a triplet type uh, rhythm instead of a, a dotted eighth, but maybe that's a little too confusing. Basically, what, what it means is that it's going to be similar to that same rhythm as we just did, the dotted eighth note sixteenth. It's very similar to that. So this is kind of assumed as being very similar to that in a polka. So instead of playing it, instead of going, it'd be, kind of the idea of a polka so um yeah try to do that same similar rhythm when you come to two eighth notes change it up a bit okay uh, as you can see i'm doing lots of sliding throughout some fourth finger sliding even denotes um c sharp sliding do another down slide because the first finger um sliding on the f sharp Really, you can slide wherever. I'm just kind of putting them in random. Um, down slide on the second ending. Regarding slurring, I didn't really mention this as well. You could just do slur, slur when you come to these rhythms. You can just slur two together. You can just do that throughout. And that's not necessarily you have to do it that way. You could do it this way as well. The two, first two sixteenth notes separate. Next two slurred, that's one way to do it. And there's just lots of different ways to play this. All right. And then the next part, downslide. Downslide, I would say. Lots of downsliding. Slurring, downslide. Fourth, I like to use fourth fingers, and maybe slide the ending. Okay, let's go through it again. I'm going to kind of add in some of those slurs I put in, and uh, maybe pick it up just a, a tad with the speed, and um, hopefully you guys can follow along. Ready, go. Like that. Okay, so um, hopefully that makes sense, and uh, you guys can you know really put in anything as far as the uh, the slurring, and um, as far as playing in tune, I highly recommend maybe using a tuner, as uh, it's easy to get those E string notes a little bit out of tune, especially those fourth fingers. Um, there's a lot of first fingers, so I find a lot of students what they do is they dip their hand quite low when playing first fingers. So make sure that you're getting your knuckles up nice and high when you're doing this piece. Um, as you're sliding, it's really easy to kind of dip your hand down. Um, make sure that you're always getting those fingers to, to make mountains. And even as you're sliding, you don't want to move up and down. It's a bad habit because, yeah, eventually you want to play it even faster. I'll give you guys kind of a version of it a little faster, um, which is harder to do when your knuckles are low and you're, not, and you're forcing slides and not keeping your hand up.
that might be up to speed. To do that, you got to have your fingers nice and tight and not um, dip down for first fingers and slides. Raise your hand if that makes sense. All right, great. So yeah, have fun with this polka. Um, you guys, actually, one thing I wanted to point out uh, that's pretty exciting, we actually are starting to do guitar um, backup tracks, accompaniment tracks. And um, basically what we're doing is for a piece like this, which actually we've done a recording of this, um, I might actually even try to see if it can work doing it just kind of a test run. Um, but, yeah, basically the, the piece can be played along with a guitar track, which we've created. Um, I'm going to quick just save this particular um, – screenshot so I can send it to you guys later. But then I'm going to actually try to play along with the guitar and see what happens. I haven't actually tried it yet, <laughs> but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to save this to my paint so I can send you guys later. There we go. And then I can actually get rid of that. Okay, so yeah, I have my guitar backing track. So this particular one, so Dennis Murphy's Polka, we have a slow version and a fast version that we've created of this so I don't know how great it's going to sound with uh yeah you guys can hear it, it sounds pretty good with a guitar <laughs> Pretty sure this is the um, fast version. Let me try this. see there was another couple minutes left there <laughs> I think he plays through it like three times uh, raise your hand if you guys were able to kind of hear that okay I don't know how that turned out I'll hear later but yeah basically the concept is um, we have a guitar track and then I can play along record it and then actually give you guys uh, the ability to play along with me or just use the guitar track which we professionally recorded to um, play along to, to your favorite pieces that was a, a fast version of it. Um, I know there's a slower version uh, that's probably half the speed of that that you guys could play along with, and I'll be able to uh, play my fiddle along to that speed. So you guys will have actually four different options. You'll have the option of playing it slow with the guitar by itself or slow with me, fast without the guitar, or fast, slow with, or fast with me. <laughs> Catherine says it sounds much better when it goes fast. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's a cool piece. So, yeah, um, hopefully you guys take advantage of these uh, guitar tracks that we're creating. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys have fun with them. So raise your hand if you guys like the idea. Just kind of wanted to get your feedback. So, great. So quite a few of you. Awesome. All right. Well, um, I'm going to kind of hang out with the people that came to the live class today and answer any questions they might have, um, hand out the, the music. And if you guys have any questions about violin, feel free to email me at michael at superiorviolins.com. <laughs>